Welcome back everyone to our Let's Play series of Motorsport Manager. So we've just finished up our first season in the Endurance DLC. We came in with no money uh, and we're going to end the season slightly in the negative at about 1.4 million. And don't you love racing where the budgets are such that 1.4 million is a slight negative. We came away with 93 points. We'll be hoping to improve on that next season, but the rules are going to change. A lot of things are going to change next season, um, and that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to try to get through as much of the offseason as we can in this video, but I really don't want to rush things along because, again, I'm enjoying this playthrough. After you've done, you know, a few hundred hours in a game, you've won championships, you've done a lot of playthroughs, uh, just want to do some different things, and I don't want to rush it. Uh, and really try to shortcut things. I I really enjoy this and, and want to get maximum enjoyment out of all parts of this playthrough. So we're done with the season, and now it's time for the off season. This is where we have time to, uh, we're going to be getting a nice influx of cash from our, uh, our winnings from the previous season now. And we're going to get, we're going to be designing the new car. We're going to be working on car parts. We're going to be doing a lot of things. Um, and one of the things we're going to really have to focus on is how do we want to approach next season? And let's see, let's go through our email because I believe we're going to have an email about this at some point very soon if it's not already here. I believe it's going to be in a few days, but let's take a look and see if it's already here. Okay, let's go ahead and respond here. we got one question. So we've got somebody's agent has been telling reporters that you're interested in signing their client. We're going to say absolutely. And the reason is it never hurts to have this personality trait, even if this isn't a driver, because I have no idea who it is right now. Don't know anything about this driver. They're Russian oil racing. Okay. So they don't look too bad. Not bad at all. It also reminds me that uh, you notice that we have a range there, 11 to 15 on braking, 7 to 10 for cornering, and so on. And that's because we've not scouted this particular driver. So it reminds me that we need to look at the scouting section. And yeah, just as I thought, we've run out of drivers. We're empty on the slots. So we were focusing on trying to scout all of the drivers that were not currently with a team. Now we can start to do some scouting with drivers that are on a team. All right, so what I'm going to do is just load this thing up and for the most part I'm going to pick all the drivers up to about age probably 31 32 somewhere in that range it's not a hard and fast rule for me but we're going to get this queue filled back up look at there 41 definitely oops didn't mean to check the 37 year old uh, in fact normally I just let that go through but this time I'm going to actually remove that one. It's not that big a deal. Because these aren't going to be guys that we're probably going to be signing anyway. Um, and I recognize some of these names I am very familiar with. And the reason is I've used them in previous playthroughs. And some of these I've won multiple championships with. Um, and those are the names that I'm most likely going to stay away from. Because I want to use some different, some different talent. See if I can do it with different drivers, such as yeah. If you've watched my previous playthroughs, you know I had quite a bit of fun with her name. That we had tons and tons of fun with that. So again, she's probably going to be somebody I'm not going to choose because I've won, if I remember, at least one championship, maybe multiple with her. Okay, that should be enough to keep us going for quite a while on the scouting. Uh, but again, the ones we're going to want to hire right now are either free agents or we're going to re-sign the drivers that we have. Now, one of the focuses that I want to have, let's see, let's go under drivers, is the top two drivers in car number one are already signed longer term. Kurt, however, is about to run out in one month so that's going to be actually in here in December that will run out and then Carolyn will also run out okay Rico yeah Rico is going to run out as well as my cam so we're going to lose all three drivers on car two and one driver on car one let's see if there's any of these guys we want to keep 
And for me, it's not really about performance so much as it is marketability going forward. Because of the rules change that, if you remember back into last season, it was voted that only the top five in each race are going to get points. It had been, I believe, top ten, which meant that you could get both of your cars in the points. Well, for us, until we become a much stronger team with much better performance, one car is really all we realistically have a shot at trying to get into the points in the top five. So all I'm really going to worry about is car number one. We're going to load up on one car and see if we can get it done. Um, and so marketability of 11% is no good. That is no good at all. Let's see. Well, 21%. That's no good either. Um, and out of the two, I'm more inclined to keep Carolyn simply because she is much, much cheaper. Okay, 21% there. Wow. Mike Ham, 41%. Not as bad, but that's... Part of that is temporary, so it'll go down to 31. So none of these guys are really what I'm just clamoring to keep. I would really like to bring in somebody from the outside. So, again, car number two, who knows what kind of drivers. We may end up with just the temporary drivers that won't cost us much of anything, but they'll be pretty terrible as well. We may end up with that uh, as a situation at least for one season. Again, we'll have to see how it goes. But for right now, picking up another driver, uh, the two best opportunities looks like we've got for free agents. Let's see, 56%, not bad. Not great, but definitely not, not too bad. And then let's see, we got Bubba, who is at 53 again. Not great, but he has great stamina. That is really good. So I am going to favor him. And let's spend, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. Okay, I like what I'm seeing here. What about temporary stuff? Marketability, okay, not bad. All right, I'm liking this quite a bit. Now, he likes to lead, and if we could get him to the lead, he would do a lot better. Uh, does not like to overtake. So, okay, not too bad, but I really like that stamina number. Let's see, what was Bubba on the stamina? Okay, 93, but he has a much higher uh, red zone. Yeah, much higher red zone there. Okay, let's take a... Let's see, what about Ollie? Okay, not bad on the stamina. Numbers are pretty good, but marketability is terrible. I really wish there was a way that I could just see marketability out here. If I could do that, that would be great. All right, let's also see, is there anybody out here that we could get a hold of that might not cost us an arm and a leg? And we'd have to worry about breaking a contract. Because remember, when it says the contract ends in 2016, that's right about now. So here in a couple of weeks, they're going to be available, assuming they don't re-sign, of course. All right, let's take a quick look at some of these. Again, the higher, the better on marketability. we got a pay driver here, 271 per race. Okay. All right, I would consider her. Uh, great stamina. Yeah, she's in good shape. Now, marketability is not great, but if we could get her for basically nothing, paying her 271 per race or less, that would be really good. Uh, Laura, we're going to bypass. I've won championships with her in the past. And let's see, where are we? Gonzalo, 40%. Yeah, not interested. The ones I would really be interested in here, okay, I like marketability, that's very good. Okay, controversial, blah, 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 all that stuff. Okay, let's see what marketability is really good. What about, all right, morale, okay, we're okay with that. We'll put her on the list as well if we decide not to tank with our second car, which I am leaning more and more toward doing, 
to save us some money. Oop, I think we just looked at her. Okay, so she's got a plus 10 in marketability to take her up to 92, though. She's really good, also really good in the wet. Okay, not, not bad at all. Okay, not bad. Oops. Not yet, Scott. All right, so we heard the mechanic relationship, not bad. Marketability is pretty good. But again, I'm thinking that it might be just worth our time to not worry about uh, so much of this. All right, let's go back. We're not going to worry about the pit crew right now. Uh, this would be a good time to improve the parts, but we don't have any more parts to improve right now. Uh, we could also try to design some new parts, but again, we don't really have enough time to do that. And we're trying to save up a little bit of money, which we are about to get more of right now. So our prize money is in for last season. Let's see what we ended up with. Okay, 18.4, very nice. I'm gonna try to make that last a little bit better than last season, but we're still gonna press the issue some. Have a little fun with it. Okay, so now we're at 17 million. Very nice. And of course, we'll have some more money coming in from the chairman, just like we did last season. And yeah, we'll have we'll have some money to spend, but I want to try to really focus on one of the cars and and try to get that performance really up there. Okay, so now we've got some awards. We're not worried about awards. The new rules, there's our points in the top five only, which is going to be huge. Okay, we got promotions. We don't have to worry about that. So the champion of Group B, which is where we are, moves up to Class A. And then the last place team from Class A moves down to our division in B. So they should be pretty strong, assuming they have any sort of infrastructure in place. Uh, but then again, if they were all that good, who knows? They may not have finished last in Class A. Okay, let's continue moving forward. Uh, let's see. Do I want to? Do I want to keep anybody? That is the question. Really trying to determine if I want to do that. Neither one of these folks are all that amazing. So I'm not happy about that, but uh, because even Carolyn, who has really good stamina as well, she would be cheaper, but her marketability is no good. So that makes me think that, let's see, let's go back over to scouting. And nope, that's not who I was looking for. Also not who I was looking for. Where are they? I really need the ability. There we go. Pay driver. I'm really thinking this is where I want to go. In fact, let's go ahead and make her an offer. So 271 or less and she'll be free. Or we might even make a little money off of her. And she's got some good numbers. She's easy on fuel. That's nice. Uh, marketability, we're not going to worry too much about. Okay, so 271. Let's go ahead and approach. She's interested. I like it. Okay, status isn't important. We'll put equal car. Wages aren't very important. All right, so we want to try to go. She's got some patience here with three uh, three potential exes. She prefer a short contract. Uh, let's go ahead and do, obviously, we don't want to do end of 2016. Let's go ahead and do, I really don't like the two months either. Or 24 months, I mean. All right, let's see what her max is. Oh, wow, no, we're not even interested in that. Luckily, they aren't very important to her. Let's go ahead and offer her right at basically what she would pay us. So we would pay her about 10 grand a race. Okay, sign-on fee isn't very important. And let's see, isn't very important, isn't very important. Isn't, okay, we're going to leave all of those out. And we're going to see if we can get her for even money. And if we can, we can. If we can't, then we can't. Okay, so we've sent that proposal over. And there's really no none of our other drivers that I want to keep because none of them have good marketability. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. And I see that the preseason is about to start. And that's really good because that means we get to design our new car. And we get to spend some of this money that we now have. Plus, we'll get a little extra money because uh, we were saving money during last season per race. All right, so you're not going to let me see our driver offer until after we do this car design. So, so be it. Let's do it. Now, here's the money we're going to get, $5.3 million. Okay, not bad. Of course, we don't know how far that will get us in designing our new car, so it may be a very good number, it may be right what we need, or it may be a lot less than what we need. So 5.3 million, let's keep that in mind. And each of these choices that we're gonna make, we're gonna keep an eye on the estimated output in the bottom right-hand corner, and I can tell you, what I'm most interested in is going to be tire heating and tire wear with an emphasis on tire heating. If you remember, most of the races we had to either focus on hustling the driver and making them push in order to get the tire heat up. Of course, that destroys their stamina and it really reduces the length of the stents that we can use. So that's no good. Or we had issues with the tires running too hot and we had to really back down the driver, which slows us down. Although it has the, the good side effect of increasing the number of laps we can run in a stent. But we want this tire heating up as high as we can get it within reason and then also same thing with tire wear. These two numbers get better, we can run longer stints and have better chances to, uh, to finish well. So here we go, we got a choice of three engine suppliers. We don't have to worry about base stat modifiers because this is a spec part. So we are going to, let's see, we got fuel efficiency is really the only thing I care about here and they're all terrible. So I see no reason to spend huge amounts of money. I'm gonna go with the bottom choice here. All right, fuel supplier. Let's see, fuel efficiency. Ooh, strong here. I like that. Uh, improvability is going to be terrible regardless. So I'm okay with spending money here. I'm okay with spending an extra $1.5 million to get really good fuel efficiency. So again, you can see how these star levels are going to change. There we go. That takes us up to almost a three star for fuel efficiency. I like it. Material supplier. And again, not a whole lot of money difference here. I like the tire wear being strong. Unfortunately, tire heating is no good. So let's go ahead and see what the three million does for us. There we go. Not bad. We're up to oh, about two and a half stars on tire wear, still two stars on the heating. And we've now come above our allotted amount of money that we have put aside for developing this year's car. We'll set aside more money this next season uh, because we should have more available. But for now, not too bad so far. It, it could be worse. And, okay, same thing here. Not a whole lot of money difference here. And let's see, tire heating, strong. I like that. Tire wear is going to be terrible regardless of what we do. So let's see what difference this makes. There we go. Basically three stars on both of these, almost three stars for fuel efficiency. I like it. Now we spent some money to get there, 8.25 million, but let's go ahead and continue. That's about the best car we could hope for within a reasonable amount of money spent. Okay, so now we don't have the ability to develop any parts right now. We can't work on anything. All of that is done. Now there used to be a glitch that where you could go back to the home screen and continue working on on parts and everything, but they took care of that. And also, even if they had that, that takes some of the fun away for this playthrough anyway. So let's go ahead and move forward. And it should give us our contract. Yes, it does. Contract offer accepted, excellent. Excellent, excellent, and excellent. So the one we're going to get rid of is the one with the least amount of buyout. The others will just have their contracts expire. So it looks like my cam, yeah, $76,000. So we're going to sign Sophia and we're going to get rid of my cam. Could have waited until the contracts expired to do this, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't lose out. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and swap over. And now this is the car lineup that I'm most interested in. Okay, this is the one we're gonna focus on. And then these guys all have expiring contracts and it's not really worth it to keep them because right now we're not in a position to have two competitive cars just yet. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and move forward. And coming up very soon, now I'm not going to worry about these scouting reports right now. All of these guys are already hired. But you noticed that contracts are ending. So we've got to the end of the month uh, to sign these guys. If we wanted to, I don't want to. I am not going to worry about it. And as soon as these contracts expire, the reason I went ahead and signed the other driver is because in this particular circumstance, uh, drivers get signed very quickly or re-signed very quickly when we get down into this time of the year, and I didn't want to lose out on that potential. All right, let's go ahead and get through all of these wonderful emails. Don't care who signed with who, but you can see there is a flurry of that stuff happening. We're also not going to worry about these scouting reports right now. Um, I will go through those probably off camera and spend a little time because there's going to be a bunch of them. So I'll go through there, and if I find anybody that we really, really want to sign for this season, then I'll show it in probably the next video. But for now, we're just going to skip by those. Okay, there we go. Contracts are now elapsed. And if we come into our driver screen, you'll notice that who we have are $1,000 per race drivers. Now, they're terrible, obviously. You know, they have no marketability and no skills, no anything. However, they're not costing us anything either. And the only downside really of doing this is that our marketability is zero for this car. So that's gonna kill us, but it's gonna save us some money on uh, the per race deal. And we'll just have to go with it from there. Again, if we see some people that we're interested in, then we'll go ahead and sign them up but they're gonna to have to be really good deals in order for us to, to really consider that. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward some more. All right, now we get our first random email. These are emails that are regarding our new car that we're developing, and they give us an, an opportunity to improve it, usually for quite a bit of money. Let's see what this email says. We've been looking at the placement of the new fuel tank, and it looks like there's a lot of flexibility there. Okay, I like it. Some small adjustments would give us large gains in improvability. I really like that. We have a suspicion that these changes would affect the car's fuel efficiency. Okay, so we could give up some fuel efficiency and get some improvability. Uh, that is, I'm going to keep the fuel efficiency Although I could see going either way with this one. I'm going to, it didn't cost us anything. I'm going to say leave it because I believe we're going to be among the top in fuel efficiency. And I like that. Uh, the way this game does fuel efficiency and fuel usage is a little bit weird in how it does it. But I'm going to keep the fuel efficiency. Okay, and here's another random email. I've had times in the past where I went through an entire off season and got none of these. And then I've had times where I've gotten several. So, so far, so good there. All right. We've heard some interesting news from our brake supplier. They've made some incredible gains in tire heating, which of course I am really crazy about. Unfortunately, it comes at a cost. All right. 2.5 million. It would be nice to have that, but uh, that's a little too expensive for us right now. I would love to do it, but it's just a little bit too expensive right now. In future years, I hope to take advantage of those type things, but we just don't have the money. All right, you can see the progress of our car. We are at 60%. And again, just in case we forget, we can always come in here and see what our chassis looks like as far as our star level. Okay, let's see what kind of emails we got. Oh, we got emails related to scouting reports, but we're not going to worry about those. Okay, let's keep going. Again, I'll look at those um, off camera, and if I find anything that we're interested in signing, I'll bring that back to you in the next video. 
Okay, so now we have a chance to change our, the look of our car. This will be a one-time deal. If we change it now, it's free of charge. If we don't, then it will cost us, I believe it's $500,000 or something along those lines if we decide to do it later. All right, let's go ahead and change it up a little bit. I like that look. All right, those of you who've been with me in the past playthroughs, you know I don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about how the car looks. Tell you what, none of these really strike me as just awesome at all. But I do want to change. I'll tell you what, I like this one's a little bit more bright. That white should really stand out when we're looking at it from the overhead view. So we'll go there. I'm going to keep the same colors. All right, so not too bad. Again, none of those really stood out to me as paint schemes I just had to have. Okay, well, good news is we are almost ready to begin working on our car. We're going to want to do that immediately as soon as we are available to do so. All right, another email, unique opportunity. Let's see what we've got. All right, so we've got one of our competitors has been in the news lately that they're Engines caught on fire, yikes. All right, so it basically it's an opportunity for us to uh, basically lower ourselves. And they said, even the chairman says, it's not exactly a classy move, but it would improve our marketability. Now, I'm not interested. Even though it's just a game, I'm not interested in doing that. As much as I would love to have more marketability. Okay. All right, let's see what else we've got here. It said we had some expiring contracts. Is that one of, who is that? So we've got, yeah, rolling contracts and rolling contracts. And all right, so she's still here for, for the duration. Now, do we want to pick up some new mechanics? Now, this mechanic has a really good level one perk. This mechanic, not so much. Level two here. Uh, all pit stops are a second faster. That's not bad. Fast pit stops have a minus 15% mistake chance. That is huge. But, of course, these guys aren't very good. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to off camera. I'm going to look and see what we want to do with the mechanic situation. And then, again, we'll, we'll talk about that more in our next video. But for now, that would be a whole lot of looking through different, uh, different scouting reports and seeing who we want to get, if anybody. So we'll do that in our next video, but for now we're going to leave this as is. Okay, it's time for preseason testing. Let's get into our email and we have to respond. All right, here we go. Now, unfortunately, there's nothing for us to do here other than hit start testing. And then we'll see in our cars if they have any issues. Uh, well, I can't see it. It won't let me see it. All right, it looks like we had an oil leak. Yeah. See that, and of course that would be on car number one. All right, and I didn't see anything ever pop up for the other car, so I guess not too bad overall. But this has always been a mystery to me as really what this even does. What's the point? We have no interface with it at all, and it seems to be completely random. So let's go to our email and see what... Scarlet has to say, testing went brilliantly. Okay, I guess if you say so. It didn't look like we had much speed, but we're in a strong position for the year. Uh, we finished not good, <laughs> but um, it's odd that car number two would finish above car number one. That makes no sense. All right, so the good news for us is that our car is now opened back up. Okay, we've had our testing. That's all good to go. And we can see where we stand. Our brakes, the good news is our brakes are about on par. We're about middle mid-pack there. Everything else is, of course, well below standards. But the biggest thing is we get a chance to start working on new parts and also the opportunity to uh, improve the existing parts. So what I plan on doing right now is I want to put... 
Okay, now these guys aren't very good, so this is going to take forever. But I want to start working on the parts and pieces. Let's go ahead and do... I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. Let's see, what's going to be in, uh, crucial here at our next race? So we're going to have the engine, the brakes, and the rear wing. Okay, we need to work on brakes then because... Of the crucial parts, they by far have the least amount of, of reliability. Okay, so we'll put those in there. And let's see, do I want to put anything over here? Uh, the problem that I have is that even though I know things get better when you put them over here, the problem that comes in for me is that I tend to forget and the game plays tricks on you like that. See what just happened there? Just by me putting things over there, it automatically dropped my staff. And sometimes I forget to move it back over, so that's why I leave this blank a lot unless I want to focus on it. Same thing on the other side. When I'm focusing on performance, then that is a weak point for me in paying attention, so I generally don't, don't do it a whole lot. But in this case, we don't have that much left to go, so we'll go ahead and get that going. And I think we're okay from here. Let's go back to to our mail. All right, now we come to the target. This is where our last influx of money is going to come from outside of sponsorship. So do we want to say we're going to finish sixth or fourth? Now, I'm hoping we don't finish sixth this year. However... However, I'm going to go ahead and pick sixth because the amount of extra money isn't worth the stress of trying to get those points right now. We're still very much in a building mode, so now we have $24.4 million. Our income looks like it's going to be about $1.5 uh, per race, excuse me, the cost per race, about $1.5 million. So... I think we're in good shape. We have nine race schedules. You can do some math there. We've got a little bit of money to spend over the course of the season, and we can choose to do that in a number of different ways. But so far, so good, I think, there. And at this point, I think we're going to call it a video here. We didn't quite make it as far uh, as the end of the off season and get ready for our first race, but I think we're close enough at this point that... Uh, we're 11 days out to our first race. I think when we come back in our next video, we'll look at uh, any possible drivers for the car number two that I found, any mechanics that I found, that kind of thing. And then we'll get into the first race of the season. So thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more of our Let's Play series of Motorsport Manager.